exciting thing and the centerpiece of tonight is this beautiful mule deer. Yes, beautiful <laughs> mule deer. So we want to start off by thanking our good friends at Excalibur because actually oh, yeah. the boys and I, we haven't hunted mule deer yet. Our mule deer hunt is coming up this fall. But this beautiful mule deer, we start out by thawing it out. And uh, one of the things I, you know, the first thing I noticed when I pulled out this mule deer is the, the incredible smell. Now, if you've ever butchered anything uh, that you've killed, you'll know that that has that, honestly, for me, yes. it's a beautiful smell. We are excited tonight as you were talking about that mule deer, right? Eh? Well, the mule deer, first oh. of all, all you have to do is just look at it. The smell. It's so red. It's That's so beautiful, yeah. so, so fresh. Crisp. Fresh. That's the thing. Oh, that, so now a couple of the side recipes that we're going to be doing. We're going to do a pico de gallo. Now a fresh salsa, fresh tomato salsa is the perfect way to accentuate this. Yeah. And one of the things that's going to go along with that is we're going to do spicy black beans. Mm -hmm. So it's all kind of the classic things. We're going to show you the way that we do our quesadillas. Yeah. I don't even have to check the recipe book. This is we do quesadillas once a week. Yeah. The thing about quesadillas. Uh, and the uh, the roots of them is you just take whatever's fresh, yep. whatever you have available to you, and all of a sudden it becomes a carrier for I that. I mean, I, I don't want to say that we're pros at it, but when we had a beach restaurant down near where we live right now, yeah. people loved our quesadillas with our homemade salsa. People just fell in love with them. They couldn't understand how we got them so golden and brown. Every so <laughs> I would have loved to make uh, flour tortillas for you tonight, but there's only so many recipes we can do. So you want to make sure to start with a good flour tortilla. <laughs> so these, you know, the important thing uh, for us is we want to just give you some techniques that will ultimately make your job in the kitchen a lot easier. So all I'm doing right now is just preparing a dice. And you saw what I did is I just simply made some nice cuts from the root to the top. And you can see what I end up with is really quite a beautiful, uh, what the French call brunoise, we'll just call it like a medium, a small to medium dice. Again, I'm running from root tip to the top, slicing through, and that motion, what you want is, rather than cutting straight through, to use your tip and just kind of drag it through, making sure that your knife is sharp. And then when you get that with your hands up like this so you don't cut yourself, slice through and then I threw you go again. So you can see that perfect dice looks beautiful. Now when we eat this, uh, when we saute that up with the mule deer, the reason I want to make sure everything is roughly the same size is so that it cooks evenly, but so I don't get any big pieces so that it's really nice and well mixed. I've got a beautiful red pepper. For me, red, yellow, orange, green, whatever you've got, toss a couple extra in. Anything yeah. that's going to add flavor, yeah, peppers sweet, are sweet. A sweet flavor too. Now you know, uh, sweet, KC, sweet. you have all that stuff, it's nice to get a pop of sweet in there too. Yep. And of course, when we saute it, we're developing flavor. So this is the way I like to prepare peppers. You can see there's very little, if any, waste. It's easy to prepare, easy to get uh, from your refrigerator onto your stove. Is there anything I can do for it? Uh, no, we're just gonna keep plugging along here. You can select, a, you know what I need? I need a uh, jalapeno. So we're gonna use two different kinds of uh, jalapeno. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's actually pretty cool. I'll throw the question out there, uh, just in case there's anybody who really knows their jalapenos. So, <laughs> do, you know, do you know what type of pepper a chipotle is? So come back to me, if you will. Yeah, I know you know. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know if I do. I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, we'll just wait for our viewer to uh, yeah. respond. Be like, yeah. So with those, it. with those sides off, now I can slice. And you'll notice those long slices are approximately the width of what I was doing with the onion. And again, that's because I want nice uniform cuts. Whoops. Um, and what we'll do actually back here, I'm going to turn the oven on. Got my uh, my trusty. Uh, Fulgor Milano here, which is keeps me uh, in good shape in the kitchen. And I'm going to start with a little bit of butter. So I'm just going to use about a tablespoon, not too much. <coughs> tablespoon of that in. And I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil. So because this, uh, this temperature won't be super high, 
I'm not gonna get a bitter flavor from that olive oil. I'll actually get some really nice flavor development. So I wanna make sure that I've got flavors on every level. Also, the color from all this is gonna be just beautiful. Yeah, these peppers are so sweet. They're good, and you know, the best thing, that's the thing, like, uh, quesadilla is this time of year, it makes so much sense, yeah. because everything is in such great condition, yeah. it's inexpensive, and you know, this is even something, let's say that you had a bit too much, this is something a lot of people ask me about. So, can you reuse a frozen meat? So, let's go through this just for a second. So once this has been thawed, it needs to be cooked. It cannot be refrozen. But what you can do is you can take and cook this and then you can freeze what you cooked. <laughs> so what you can do, like I've got a big, I got, I got like about almost three pounds of mule deer here, mule deer. What I can do is I can make this side Anything that's left over, I can put in the fridge or I can put it in the freezer into individual bags, yeah. maybe use it for lunch or dinner on another day. Yeah. But keep that in mind. After you've thawed meats of any kind, any protein, it needs to be cooked before you can refreeze yeah. it. Okay, so now with all these lined up, so do you know what this cut is called? Julienne. Julienne, yes, that's good. I'm learning, I think. Yeah, there you go. And so all you do is just line that up and you can see there, there comes that familiar, nice dice, easy to prepare. You can see the most important thing, as you said, sharp yeah. knife, right? What cut is that? What cut is that? That's where it was. Or that's like I said, a medium dice. Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, let's push those up there. And then I've got the jalapeno left. Yep. How are you going to cut the and well, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take, I don't want the seeds in. So the hottest part of the jalapeno is actually the seeds. I'm only gonna use probably about half of this one. So I'll set that aside. And so the important thing is to remove the seeds. Yeah, no, it's hot, brother. It's yeah, hot. All the juices are getting in my eyes. Yeah, no, it's really hot. Now, the upside is when we do saute it, it will mellow those flavors, okay? so. The key is here now, I don't want to do great big dice. This is where we want to go, fine dice. Really fine. Really fine, nice fine strokes here. You'll notice when I'm slicing a pepper that I don't slice on the skin. It's much, much easier and much easier to handle if you turn it over with that skin side down and just run your knife through evenly. And again, after we've prepared that julienne, we can now slice. Look at that, it's so beautiful, it smells so good. It's so fresh. So with the pan preheated, we want to go in. Look at that beautiful color. So those jalapenos are going in. The red peppers are going in and that onion, we'll get all that in. Nothing's wasted. Simple flavors. Now, this is the time, I give that a stir. This is the time where we want to get that salt in. So I've got, uh, you'll see I always use a really nice flake sea salt. And that's because I love the texture and I love the moisture content. So I'm literally just gonna take and I'll just put that on. Now that salt is gonna help to draw out some of that moisture, but more importantly, it's just gonna get that flavor rolling. Now I'm gonna add fresh ground pepper. You might say, well, why are you putting pepper in when you've already got the jalapeno in? Yeah. The reason I'm doing that is because that fresh ground pepper, those beautiful little colored berries, when you grind it fresh, they release, release that oil and that's layers of flavor, flavor man, I'm telling you. <laughs> You can't be without it. It makes me, it makes me stutter. Yeah. Layers of Layers flavor. flavor. Yes. We got flavor in here. So we're gonna saute that, develop that flavor. That's and while we do, you know what? I think it's time for a little beverage as yeah. I continue to Let's work start. here. So the uh, chipotle pepper is actually a smoked jalapeno. So it is uh, this, there, there you have, this is the beautiful uh, chipotle and that adobo sauce. This to me, I literally, I always have a can of this around. It is a beautiful, sweet and smoky heat that is mellowed and this is hot, like that's this is hot, hot. No, I, no, it, the sauce is just oh, beautiful. Yeah. So some of our, uh, all of our flavors today are gonna be tempered by some of that adobo sauce right. and some of that uh, chipotle, but never forget now, a jalapeno is a chipotle smoked. There you go. It's all you. And what we're gonna do to cool down your mouths after eating all those jalapenos, yes. and chipotles and that is we're gonna do a sour peach margarita. So like you said, I was inspired last week because honestly these Georgia peaches that have come in are just, they're breathtaking man. They're, well, they're, they're, they I think I've so already, good. I've eaten about six of the uh, nine that I think I got here. So that's what we're gonna be making there guys. So I'll show you here. 
The nice thing is about mixing up flavors, so everybody knows a margarita, right? Yeah. But the nice thing is about taking something like this, you might not think of it, yeah. but you're walking along and you're just thinking peaches, limes, Lime. and that simple syrup, tequila, yeah. these are things that love each other. They're gonna go great together. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna be showing you something that's called a simple syrup. Now I'm sure you've seen it, you know, in the grocery store, it's red, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's yellow, depending on the, the flavor that it is. But I'm going to show you how to make one yourself and flavor it. So simple syrup is simply 50% sugar, 50% water. So come on over here, I'll show you. I've got one cup of water in a pan here. I'm going to heat that up, bring it to a boil. Because what happens is when you drop that sugar in your water, you want that sugar to emulsify immediately. And then to flavor it with that lime, the whole reason we're calling this sour is because of the lime flavor. Now we're gonna do lots of lime, so it is sour. So you'll so see. So I'm gonna jump in there for a second because a great talking point, you think about all these great flavors, you know, sweet and sour. Yep. You think to yourself, why, you know, we could just do peach, right? The nice thing about making it sour and yep. sweet is that your palate, your palate picks up uh, salty and sweet and bitter exactly. and all these things. And tell me, what do you put on the edge of that? Salt. Salt. So I mean, you can do sugar, but salt really tempers all of that, all of those flavors. Well, it brings salty. it together, right? Yeah, exactly. So as a professional chef, what you're always doing to elevate flavors is finding ways to appeal to the entire palate. Yeah. It's something, you know, if you've had something that's just super sour yep. or worse, super, super sweet. Too much. You need something, you need that acidity to cleanse yep. the palate, you need the sweetness to spark your yep. soul, yep. and you need that salt to remember your salt it's in the It's the earth. same way that you've seen us add in previous drinks, Angostura bitters, for example. That's basically like the salt and pepper of the drink world. You're seasoning your drinks with that type of thing. So to begin with, we're gonna use fresh lime juice. If you can use fresh lime juice, that's the best. You'll see I am gonna use a little bit of a concentrate, but our main juice is gonna come from fresh limes. And you're gonna to wanna to buy yourself one of these reams. It's a simple tool, you can get them at the dollar store and just allows you to get all the juices that you possibly can out of that lime. What I'm doing here, guys, just so you know, um, while Dakota's making this drink, is I'm just gonna prep the base for my spicy beans. And uh, yeah, I'm watching that part, I just turned that Yep, on. yep. Um, and so that's what I'm working on right now. So we're gonna add about three fresh limes Lots of lime juice. These limes are actually really nice. There's actually a lot of juice. Whenever you're selecting limes, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever had the frustration if you oh. open a lime and you squeeze it and you're like, it's like one drop, it's crazy. Yeah. Always make sure to check the weight of citrus. So literally feel it and it should oh. feel nice and heavy. <laughs> yeah, look at that, look at man. That's like, one is like two. Come here, Easy. look at this. I'll do the next, the other half of this one here. Watch this. This is one to how much juice you want coming out of your limes. Look at this. Not hard to make limeade out of that. Holy. Look at the amount of lime juice there. Now come on over here, our water's boiling. So once our water's boiling, we're gonna, so we had a cup of water in there, cup of sugar now, drop that right in. Got myself a whisk here. And you're just gonna wanna whisk that together until that sugar completely emulsifies in the liquid. You'll see it happens fairly quickly. And you can see the consistency of that is quite viscous. And this is enough uh, simple syrup. You can make an entire, you can make five liters of simple syrup if you want. Put it in the fridge and keep it for the rest of the weekend or a couple weeks. And I'll show you the way that we're gonna flavor this to make it a little bit more bitter. I'm actually gonna add some lime zest in there. And of course, obviously that heat, because the water is boiling hot, is gonna activate the oils in that zest immediately. Oh, if you could smell this right now, as soon as that zest hits the water, it just lights this room up. So I'm just slicing rings of this beautiful jalapeno, and that's because I want to create a different appearance. So I want something that's a little dirty, a little gnarly, and I'm telling you, this is going to be a kick in the pants when we make this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, I got my uh, cast iron here. You'll see I use a ton of cast iron. That's because I love the way it holds the heat. I love the way that it cooks. So I'm just gonna get this preheated. Yep, I'm gonna show you guys here. Now you'll see we have that lime zest in there. Now you wanna get that out of your simple syrup so that no one gets a real bite. You'll see I'm using a stainless steel bowl here. You don't wanna pour this hot liquid into glass or something because it could crack it. So 
You see, we're gonna drain all that out. Look at that lime it zest. Incredible. It oh my goodness, I love cooking. Don't you love cooking? Oh yeah. And so you the actually. Bailey's right. Yep. You actually were cooking. I was. Cooking. <laughs> you were cooking, I'm cooking a margarita. On the stove. I'm cooking a margarita. So this simple syrup. You want to take that, put it in the fridge, let it cool down. Of course, if you pour this in here right now, it's going to melt your eyes, make your drink a little bit warmer than it should. So set that in the fridge. But I've made some in advance, so I've got about probably about half a cup of simple syrup, and you'll see, watch how much actually goes in. This is the sweet to our drink. And the viscosity. And the very viscosity. Cool. Is you very can see thin. that. It looks, yeah. you know what it reminds me? It reminds me like of the of the texture of like yeah. motor oil. Yeah, exactly. So you get that nice thickness, it's very yep. rich. But the nice thing is, instead, if you were to just put sugar in here yep. and blend it, you'd have crystals. Now you'll see we have some silver tequila here. <coughs> Oh, I grabbed the cup measure, that's what I would normally do. We're gonna add about, probably about four ounces here into this amount. We've got some thirsty people in the crowd, so we'll add lots. I'm gonna have to make a lot of quesadillas for <laughs> Silver tequila, and then some triple sec. So the reason I added, this isn't in a typical margarita, but this is gonna bring some really nice orange notes to it and add just a little bit more alcohol so that the reason I like using sometimes two different types of alcohols is so that you know if you're having a big party or something and you want to get your alcohol content up and you have a large group of people you're not flying through your tequila flying through your whiskey you have a few different types of alcohol that so you're not using all from one so we're gonna add about an ounce and a half of that triple sec Two second uh, break to bring you black beans, spicy black beans. So I've got the, the cast iron heated now. What I've got is I just have onions, which of course again, sauteed onions, beautiful flavor, and I've got those jalapenos. Now those jalapenos are gonna mellow in flavor, but they're still gonna be hot. All of that beautiful heat is gonna be in there. Seeds and all. Now, have a glance just behind here, and you can see what I'm trying to do. This is starting to, it's, it's, you know, it's becoming translucent. You can see that it's beginning to saute, but I don't want to stop this process, process yet. I want to get more flavor, so I'm just going to wait. One of the keys to, uh, to making sure that you get levels of flavor, impressive levels of flavor, is not to rush. Take it easy, slow things down. What's that saying we have? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's the way it is in the kitchen all the time. You gotta slow things down to speed things up. It happens that way all the time. Make sure your pan is hot. Make sure your preparation is done. That's the way that you succeed in a restaurant and that's the way you'll succeed at home. Let's have a quick look at this. This is already starting to saute and I'm gonna bring up all those beautiful flavors. And I can hardly wait to taste that black bean. I'm telling you man, it's gonna be on. Fire, on fire, on fire. These peaches, I'll show you if you don't know how, all you wanna do is take your knife and run it around the center of the peach. It's gonna split in half. You'll notice one half always comes out without the seed. And I'm just simply quartering it into that drink. And with this one, I won't add another one, but you simply do it again. That comes off, pull that seed out. Bob's your uncle, away you go. Now, like I said, I am gonna add some of this lime, this concentrated lime juice just to bring a little bit more of that bitter flavor in. All right, she's ready to blend up, guys. Come on over here. This is gonna happen quick. Yeah, take it slow, man. I gotta see this. Okay, okay. go for it. I wanna see this. With this hurricane, I'll start it slow. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. said we're going to use salt to rim it so we're gonna take this is a traditional margarita glass take a lime wedge cut a slit in it and run that along the entire edge this is what's gonna cause your salt to stick to the rim of the glass kind of squeeze it a bit eh yep this salt is uh, oh, like kind of like a just gorgeous man mm. And like I said, you can use sugar if you're not a person who likes saltiness. Or, or a salt and sugar mix we've yeah. done before, yeah, too. You can, yeah, that's true. The raw sugar, yep. it looks really... So a quick note, um, 
If you want something kind of uh, interesting, you can take the uh, the coarse sugar and the coarse salt, kind of mix them up, use a mortar and pestle, yep. and you can bring them together. And that way, when you take that sip, you get salty and sweetness. So that's what you're looking for. You want that nice bite, that salt that's immediately gonna light up the rest of those flavors. And you'll see we've just done a little disc of lime there on the edge for a little bit of garnish to make it look nice. And I'm gonna put some uh, peach wedges in there. We always do it, we always show in the drink, we give you a little hint as to what's in the drink by adding it in a garnish. It's kind of the point of a garnish, is yeah. to let people know what's in my drink. It's, yeah, it's it, that and then of course the peaches get drunk too and the oh, peaches exactly. taste pretty good, especially this delicious. time of year. Okay, we're just gonna set that on the edge there. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Come over here. Love I'm just it. Gonna blitz this up. <laughs> Look at that when consistency. You get, when you're done with that drink, we've got to show the folks on Instagram. A margarita is almost all ice. It's very viscous, and you'll see. Here we go. Look at that. It's almost like a slushy. See that consistency? Oh, oh, my gosh. Look at that. That looks so beautiful. Look at all those beautiful little flecks of the flesh that's been chewed up. That is absolutely stunning. Now, of course, peach juice doesn't typically have the uh, skin in it. So... You'll hear us say this ad nauseum. We yep. say it a lot. Why on earth? You know when you take a bite out of a peach, it's juicy and it's sweet on the inside, but that skin has great flavor so too. Flavorful, so when man. you chop that up and put it in there, first of all, the color is darker. So that's a bit, oh, I love that. Look at that, that's gorgeous. The color is darker and tons more fit flavor. Bay, I'm going in here with the mule deer. We're just gonna finish this up here, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. Take that to your guests. They sure are going to be happy. I don't know if we can drink these ones. They're too beautiful. Well, this is why you have to have a hot pan. You see all that developing on the bottom there? We need that. That's oh, where you. Oh, it smells incredible. This is where you're going to develop flavor, folks. You've got to make sure to have a hot pan. See how much I've got in here? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that around just a little bit. And then I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Let that sear off. Look at this, that base for the black bean, that's turning out beautifully as well. Okay, so we got some great flavor developing here. Of course, that's what you want with the onions. They're starting to become translucent, but if they're sauteed to brown, that's really what I'm looking for. Yep. Okay, so you can see how beautiful that is. Now, back here, oh, let's man. turn this over. Let's have a look at what's going on down here. Oh my gosh. See that nice brown that's starting to develop? Now, we're gonna leave this. Of course, I could I could finish this just the way it is. We can continue to cook it, but I wanna brown that. So the most important thing for me now, got that in, and I'm sitting here talking, I gotta get some salt on this. So the, mo the important thing when you're seasoning is to season in layers. Make sure that as you put ingredients in, you continue to season and develop all of those beautiful flavors. Now, let's look at this. My cast iron top, so I'm going to take, where do I, there's, okay. my, there's my tortillas. tortillas. Yeah, so once I get started, I'm going to use this beautiful cast iron piece. Uh, no, it's not quite hot yet. No, I don't have it on yet. Okay. So, uh, but the nice thing is you can use also a frying pan. And come to think of it, I'm going to show you on that grill, but I'll also show you on the frying pan so you know yeah. you can do it at home yourself, no problem. This is, now that I think about it, if, you, if you're hunting like Nate and get things done in two hours, this would be a great thing. You know, bread is easy enough to bring out to camp with you, especially if you're hunting near home. This is an awesome thing. If you've got a mule deer down and you're quartering it out and you've got that meat there, slice the meat into little thin steaks, fire it up on the fireside, and you can do this there in camp. Do me a favor and grab my... Now, you might think that that's just ridiculous. You're like, I'm out hunting, I'm not going to make this. <laughs> but uh, grab the spice thing. Yeah. So, I want to show you. Now, this might be... You might think... You you have all seen these before. This is how you take a six-pack with you to uh, keep it cool. But this is what the boys and I have done. We've taken this uh, cooler and we've turned this into our mobile kitchen. So using, uh, we use these because of course, the uh, canning jars, when you seal them up, they can get wet and it's not gonna damage what's inside. We have a wide range. We've got salt, star anise, cinnamon, black pepper. This is a knockoff on that old bay spice, which honestly you can put on anything. Fennel seeds, cumin seeds, allspice berries, 
cardamom, coriander, you name it. I can get 15 in this. And that, if I take that with me, I can cook just about anything in the woods or in the backyard. Now, come on over here. Let's have a quick look at this. We've got a few things going here. So look at that beautiful texture of that. I'm gonna turn that over. Let's see if we develop some nice color there. So the first thing, the reason we use alcohol, first of all, is because there's flavor. So we've got more or less, we've got a Mexican theme going. So I'm using Dos Equis. Now look at that. What's coming off the bottom there is instantaneously flavor. So all of that beautiful, now I don't know, if, um, I'll tell you something just as a side note. Um, in a professional kitchen, and let's have a look at this while I talk about it, because it's happening like instantaneously. Do you see the color of that? We're essentially creating like what would be like a, an onion stock. And I'll tell you something. In a professional kitchen, when you want to give uh, some real robust, dark flavor and color, you'll actually, you can actually take an onion. Onion is one of the things you can actually burn and develop a ton of flavor. We'll actually hold it over an open flame, take that full onion, set it on skin and all, and put it right into a stock, into a soup. Incredible flavor. But this is the fun part. So we've got all the flavor in the beer. We've got this beautifully reduced now. It's cooked to perfection. And now we're going to go in, we're going to finish that up with some beer. I'm adding that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cook that until it's essentially dry. So I'm literally going to take anything that's developed on the bottom is now going to be in that. And I'm just going to continue to cook that until it's almost completely dry. But here's the proof right here. You can see, look at the color of that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Now it's time to go in with some of these beans. Now these, these were soaked overnight. If you're using canned beans, make sure to uh, strain them beforehand. You want to make sure to get that uh, packing liquid, that brine that it's put in. So we're, I'm going to go in, oh my gosh, these beans, I'm just going to love these beans. I love black beans. There's nothing like the texture, full of protein. I think all the food we're making tonight is, uh, is good health food. Good health food. So literally, I'm just going to take that now. A little bit of salt. Good carb load. Exactly, a little salt. <laughs> this is the before the hike, before the hunt. Nice meal with the family before you head out for a couple of days. This is the meal you want to make. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now this is my spicy black bean. I'm going to turn this down to low. I'm going to take that kettle. I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to let that just cook away. And now it's time to make the pico de gallo. So we're gonna start with uh, some of this. So first of all, the okay. beautiful cilantro. So cilantro is a is a, a key ingredient when making a pico de gallo. So what I'll do is I'll start by putting. It's got it's it's incredibly bright flavored. Yep. And what I always do, literally, if I'm using a food processor, now you can do all of this by hand. You do not need a food processor. Nope, just but chop for it up me, fine. just chop it up fine. But for me tonight, I got to get this done for you. So I'm literally gonna take. I'm going to tear that top off. All of those stems that are in the upper part along the leaves, those are fine. To tell you the truth, I could probably chop these up. But for the right texture, I'm literally I'm going to put these in. So I'm going to start with those leaves. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I never like having a big bite of onion. I don't know about you, but when I have salsa, I like the flavor of onion, but I don't want that huge bite. When I'm using onions, instead of taking and slicing the whole thing off, I only want about a third of this onion. I'm literally just going to take a side. And whenever you're working with a food processor, it really helps to break down the uh, ingredients to, you know, to a smaller size yeah. so that it'll really come up evenly. This is one of the things I love about cooking and especially working with different ingredients is just look at that. Look how beautiful that onion and, and what happens in nature when this grows from a seed Let's have a look and at turns this. into this. So you can see here, I want to show you how that, that beer has now completely reduced. That That's the key to working with cast iron. Now I'm going to turn that back burner off completely. Any more cooking will be done by the residual heat, but that is ready to go just as it is. Okay, so these, I'm just going to cut this up. Chopper and hand. actually I will get you to do something. Yep. I want to do... Um, you can literally just take the cores out of these and then quarter yeah. them for me. You got so, a pairing Yep, right there. Thank you. Those in, and then I'm gonna put the lime in. So 
Uh, as Dakota said, the uh, incredible flavor that comes and fragrance that comes from the lime zest is amazing. First thing I always do is just take and roll that lime. Rolling it will kind of loosen it up a little bit. It'll make juicing a whole lot easier. And as soon as you start zesting, that fragrance, that's unbelievable. Now, of course, you can just use the lime juice. The problem is it won't be nearly as good without this zest. Well, the zest adds a lot of flavor. I find it almost an, it's almost a different flavor when you add the zest. Well, it's certainly more fragrant. It, yeah. it tastes great. It smells great. And, of course, it's, uh, it's going to help to brighten up the other flavors and mellow them out at the same time. So zest going in. So this pico de gallo is something that uh, I've been making for a long time. This uh, a fresh salsa is good for so many things, of course, all Mexican dishes. Uh, but this also makes a beautiful topping to something as simple as chicken or fish. Like pico de gallo for me and fish. The reason that I do all of this first, you'll notice I'm doing this in a specific order. I'm, take, I'm gonna take half of a fresh jalapeno and I'm gonna take the seeds out of that as well. And what I want is I'm gonna start in the food processor with all the ingredients that I essentially want to be the smallest. So I would like a different texture. I like a little bit of the tomato completely pureed. And I'd like some of the pieces that are a little more chunky. I don't know about you, but I like that texture I like, when I'm eating I like too. Chunkier I don't want baby food is what no. I'm saying. I like, uh, I like salsa, like I personally, if, even if I use a food prep processor, I'll leave a couple of tomatoes in and then chop them up a little bigger so you have a nice big chunk too every once in a while. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take a couple of these. So I'll take, let's say three full tomatoes. I got a dozen. Uh, so first of all, like, are you looking at that color? It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the other thing is I want to put in the uh, adobo sauce as well as that uh, chipotle. I want to put that in at this time because I want that really pureed. There's that beautiful adobo sauce. You can see that there. So now what I'm going to do, start off by doing is pulsing because what that does is that throws the ingredients up and they drop back down allowing you to get a nice even mix. Look at the way that's coming together. Now remember, this one I want almost completely pureed. This is basically going to be like the base for the rest of the salsa. Let's check this over here, Code, and see how we're making out. So this is perfectly finished now. That's completely ready. Let's have a look. This is a little hot. Oh, look at that. Cooking together nicely. I'm actually just going to give that a little bit of a stir here. Let's see what that's doing underneath. Oh my gosh, you looking at that? Look at that beautiful juice being rendered there. That liquid's coming out. I want that to dry up quite a bit. That means I'm going to leave that lid off from here on in. Let that reduce a little bit. How are we doing over there, babe? Good. All the tomatoes are now cut up and quartered. Okay, you can bring those over here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. So you can see that's essentially the base for my pico de gallo. Now it's important for me to get a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna put this in, go ahead and put those in. It's really important also to not overfill the uh, food processor so that it doesn't, uh, so it can fall down as you pulse it. We're going into full production here. Okay, that's good. I love that. Oh yeah, it looks good. And we'll do another one here. As you can see with Surefire Wednesdays, it's really important for us to make all of these recipes in real time. Making them in real time shows you that how easy it is to make really good food fresh, with fresh ingredients, and in not a lot of time. If I'm doing this while I'm talking with you, imagine how quickly you could do it at home. And the nice thing is about doing a batch like this is that you can make enough for a couple days, certainly enough this will hold for uh, three or four days in really great condition and be beautiful whether you're cooking chicken or fish or even if you're having a little bit of uh, leftovers from the southwest. <laughs> so. One of the things that you really want to make sure, if it's at all possible, if you have the time, is to make sure to bring this together maybe an hour beforehand. As you, if you bring this together an hour beforehand, all of these flavors are going to have a chance to come together beautifully. They'll get you to just stir that for stir me, buddy. 
And then we, we are going to get into production here. The last thing I want to do is I want to put together a spice mix. And this is one that I really, really love. And this is really important for me to show you how simple it is to make your own. This is essentially a taco seasoning. So we're going to start, we've got uh, the ancho chili. So this ancho chili, so here's another ch uh, pepper test. Ancho chilies are poblanos, fresh poblanos that have been smoked. So here we've got this beautiful ancho chili. So that it smells amazing. So I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of ancho in there. And then I've got cumin, which I just love. We'll put about the same amount of cumin in there. Yeah, that's better now. Good? Oh yeah. Good. Good. And then we're gonna put some coriander. All of these have been toasted fresh and then, uh, and then ground up. You can use a mortar and a pestle or you can use, and I've got a little bit of paprika here, so we'll put about a teaspoon of paprika. Beautiful, and then this is ground garlic and what I use is I actually use garlic flakes uh, beautiful California garlic flakes and that's onion and just a little bit of cayenne you don't need very much little goes a long way so this I'm now just gonna mix this up you can see how beautiful that is and this would smell and taste like a very classic taco seasoning but this is what really makes Mexican cuisine superior is their attention to detail when it comes to the spices, especially when it comes to their peppers. So, I'm gonna take in some of this, this is gonna go directly into the meat. I'm gonna season that, so it's gonna go directly in. Soon as that hits that, my goodness, it already starts to smell so incredible. And, you know, we don't wanna mask the flavor of this beautiful mule deer. Keep in mind, this could be mule deer, this could be black bear, this could be whitetail, this could be elk. Anything that is, uh, you know, any, any wild game that you have, this would be a perfect fit for. So I've got this now, it's starting to heat up nicely. So this is the key. We're gonna take a little bit of oil, start by seasoning the pan. You wanna make sure that you've got lots of beautiful uh, oil on there. Now I'll just take a brush that. You can see that that pan is hot. We'll just want to take a minute, make sure that it's perfectly seasoned. That way we won't have anything sticking and that way it'll be sure to get lots of beautiful color. What do you think, babe? Oh, it's nice. It smells good, eh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can smell even the flavor in olive oil alone. Yeah, it's so just gorgeous. So we'll start building. We start, that goes down. Now, the glue, we've got some cheddar here. So I've got uh, so a little bit of aged cheddar. You can use jack cheese, whatever you like. Now keep in mind that it's the cheese that's the glue. Holds, you want, everything, together. holds everything together. So that goes on first. And then we're going to start with uh, some of this gorgeous mule deer. Are you looking at that? Look at that, eh? Looks oh almost like gosh. shredded. Oh thing, my like gosh, pulled so pork good. Almost. It smells so good. It's going to be such beautiful texture. Now, you're going to want to pile this a mile high, but keep in mind, you got to flip this baby. So you got to make sure that you don't end up wearing these ingredients. Then for me, these beans. Oh, yeah. So, oh my God, smell, smell. smell the jalapenos. Oh, my oh, gosh, they smell so good. So literally put some of these beans on. Oh, my gosh, it looks so good. So good. Now, Let's get, we want to brighten this up. We want a little bit of freshness. So I'm going to take, and let's just do a, a nice spring onion. So we'll just slice this, just like this. A little slower for those of you who can't cut like that. <laughs> Myself and included. we'll take that. We, the reason we do them nice and thin like that is you don't want too heavy a bite, but you see how beautiful that is? That's absolutely incredible. You know what I want in there too? Let's put a little bit of, <laughs> Let's put just a bit of this in here, just yeah. a bit, right? Just building, building, building flavors. We're going to put this on the outside, but we're going to put a little bit on the inside as well. So you don't want to hide those flavors from the beautiful mule deer. But one of the things about serving wild to table is you want to make sure that it's palatable for everybody. You want everybody to fall in love with wild to table the way that we have. So now the next layer of glue, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit, throw some heat on there. 
next layer of glue and don't don't be shy with the cheese and the more di you know the different types of cheese the more you can use the better it will be because it'll just give you a ton of flavor six cheese cases exactly now you're talking so then the other one on top now a lot of times i've seen people making quesadillas and what they do is they make half and then fold it over okay I like, we did them at our restaurant this way. I love doing them this way. You can see 360 degrees of what's in this. And all you have to do is on top, just drizzle a little bit of the oil. Keep in mind, if you're thinking, oh, it seems like a lot of oil, all the excess oil, it just stays on the pan, not to worry. And then if you can get yourself one of these babies, it's a relatively inexpensive. And when it comes time, you just check on it, make sure it's doing good but you can do the same thing in one of the regular pans as well. So while that cooks up, I just wanna show you this. Now this is completely, almost completely reduced. You can see this beautiful flavor there. Now, I'm gonna turn this off. Now keep in mind, if you're serving a large group of people, one of the great things about using cast iron is that it'll stay hot, it'll yeah. keep warm. Even so after you, you turn it off. Exactly. Now one of the things you want to watch with the tortillas is they have a tendency to get away from you a little bit. Are you ready for this? Look at me. Are you ready for this? Let's have a look. So it's quesadilla time. Okay, so now I could have left that, I just saw this corner, I could have left that a little longer, but you know what, I'm not gonna worry about that because I, when the other side is perfectly done, I'm gonna turn it over and crisp up that side just a little bit as well. 